Hello everyone. So let us look at what is structure function relationship of proteins. Now it is basically the function of the protein that can be explained by the structure it possess or the structure it has. Now what determines the structure function relationship of proteins? Now first is the three dimensional structure of protein is responsible for the function. So we all know that the functional protein is the tertiary protein. Now the tertiary protein is so arranged that the hydrophilic part or the polar part of the protein is on the outside whereas the hydrophilic part hydrophobic part or the non polar part is inside so this ensures that all the reactive groups are present on the outside for the protein to undergo reaction whereas the non polar part which is not reacting is on the inside and thirdly the three dimensional structure is based on the primary structure so as we have seen with the last uh, lecture the primary structure is the linear sequence of amino acid which is present in a polypeptide chain now if the sequence of this amino acid changes the function of the protein will change so the three dimensional structure or the tertiary structure of the protein is in turn dependent on the primary structure so let us try to understand the structure function relationship of two proteins first is hemoglobin which is which the function of which is to transport oxygen and the second is myoglobin and the function of which is for storage of oxygen okay with respect to oxygen we will try to understand the function of hemoglobin and myoglobin first hemoglobin if you look at the structure of hemoglobin it's a tetrameric protein that means it consists of four polypeptides okay 1 2 3 4 so it consists of two alpha polypeptides and two beta polypeptides okay. and each polypeptide has a heme group which is attached at the center so it has four polypeptides and four heme groups which are present in hemoglobin now it is found exclusively in rbc that we all know the function of hemoglobin is it transports oxygen from lung to tissues and carbon dioxide and hydrogen from tissues to the lungs now these four polypeptides okay so let us this is the another representation of the same hemoglobin molecule it consists of four polypeptides okay alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 now these four polypeptides each having a heme group okay are attached by various bonds or we call them salt bridges okay so alpha 1 alpha 2 is attached by a salt bridge alpha 2 beta 2 attached by another bond okay so similarly this is how the hemoglobin tetramer or is arranged now <coughs> when hemoglobin binds with one molecule of oxygen okay so we know that total hemoglobin binds with four molecule of oxygen okay one polypeptide will bind with one molecule and four polypeptides will bind with four molecule so binding of one mo oxygen molecule facilitates the binding of another oxygen molecules so this is known as allosteric effect Okay, so how does this happen? So when the first oxygen molecule comes, okay, it breaks one of the salt bridges. It breaks one of the bonds. Okay, so when this bond breaks, there is occur there occurs a structural change in the hemoglobin. So hemoglobin, the polypeptides become more free. They open up. So when they open up, it facilitates the binding of another oxygen molecule. So similarly, when the another oxygen molecule binds, another bond is broken. Okay. so another bond is broken similar and when the third oxygen molecule binds another bond is broken and ultimately when all four oxygen molecules bind okay, the hemoglobin has all four oxygen molecules binding to the heme groups of four polypeptides and the oxygen and the hemoglobin molecule assumes a relaxed form or an r form so this binding of one oxygen molecule which facilitates the binding of another oxygen molecules due to breaking of these bonds which are present in between the polypeptides is called positive allosteric effect okay so basically allosteric effect is binding of one oxygen molecule facilitates the binding of another oxygen molecule this allosteric effect occurs because hemoglobin is a tetramer it's a multimeric protein okay it consists of four polypeptides not a single polypeptide if there was a single polypeptide this allosteric effect will not take place so because hemoglobin consists of four polypeptides so binding of one oxygen molecule helps the binding of 
another oxygen molecule so this is the structure of hemoglobin containing four polypeptides that helps its function to transport oxygen so the function of transport oxygen is it takes up oxygen easily binding of one oxygen molecule will facilitate the binding of other oxygen molecule so the oxygen is taken up easily similarly the oxygen is also released easily so hemoglobin functions perfectly as transport of oxygen and this is the reason why because of the structure of hemoglobin it's a tetrameric protein now let us look at the structure of myoglobin now myoglobin is a also a heme protein okay so it's also a polypeptide which contains heme okay which is present mainly in heart and skeletal muscles now it consists of a single polypeptide which is similar to individual polypeptide chain of hemoglobin so hemoglobin was having four polypeptides okay so out of that one polypeptide it is similar to i mean molecular myoglobin is similar to that one individual polypeptide so this polypeptide also is capable of binding oxygen because it contains heme so myoglobin binds with only one oxygen molecule because it consists of only one heme group which is binding to one polypeptide hence myoglobin only serves as an oxygen reservoir okay and not as an oxygen carrier okay so this is how the structure of myoglobin helps to store oxygen okay it binds with oxygen and only when there is a dire need of oxygen under conditions of strenuous exercise then the myoglobin which is present in the muscles will release the oxygen okay when the partial pressure of uh, uh, oxygen is very low under conditions of strenuous exercise then the myoglobin releases oxygen and it provides oxygen to the muscles for activity okay so hope you have understood what is the structure function relationship of proteins thank you